Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to evening prayer from St. Michael and all angels. We begin on page 60 of our Books of Common Prayer. The Lord has declared his salvation, his righteousness he has openly displayed for all nations to see. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God our Savior, and praise your name for ever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. O gracious light, <coughs> pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light we sing your praises O god father son and holy spirit you are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices O son of god O giver of life and to be glorified through all the worlds let us now pray for the forgiveness of our sins lord we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. In a moment of silence, let us reflect on those areas of our lives where we have fallen short of God's desire for us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and save you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, merciful Lord, to your faithful people, pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and save you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Psalms for this evening are Psalms 19, found on page 490, and Psalm 46, found on page 527. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber, it rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the utmost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandments of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened. And in keeping them, 
there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Psalm 46, found on page 527. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth may be moved, and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tumble at its tumult. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be overthrown. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord. What awesome things he has done on earth. It is he who makes war to cease in all the world. He breaks a bow and shatters a spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 29, beginning at verse 20. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go in to her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went in to her. Laban gave his maid Zilpah, to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When the morning came, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve with, serve with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, This is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for saving me another seven years. Jacob did so, and he completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. Laban gave his maid Bilhah to his daughter, Rachel to be her maid. So Jacob went in to Rachel also, and he loved Rachel more than Leah. He served Laban for another seven years. When the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Leah conceived and bore a son, and she named him Reuben, for she said, Because the Lord has looked on my affliction, surely now, 
my husband will love me. She conceived again and bore a son and said, Because the Lord has heard that I am hated, he has given me this son also. And she named him Simeon. Again she conceived and bore a son and said, Now this time my husband will be joined to me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore he was named Levi. She conceived again and bore a son and said, This time I will praise the Lord. Therefore she named him Judah. Then she ceased bearing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now turn to the Magnificat on page 67 of our Books of Common Prayer. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in you, O God, my Savior. For you have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things, and the rich you have sent away empty. You have come to the help of your servant Israel, for you have remembered your promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of John, chapter 8, beginning at verse 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Then the Pharisees said to him, You are testifying on your own behalf. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid because I know where I have come from and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I judge no one. Yet, even if I do judge, my judgment is valid. For it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. In your law, it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is valid. I testify on my own behalf, and the Father who sent me testifies on my behalf. Then they said to him, Where is your Father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my Father. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now recite the canticle, Jesus Savior, found on page 52. Jesus Savior of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Savior and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. This evening, 
I have chosen to take a reflection from the Gospel reading of John. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and Redeemer. Amen. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. For most of us, darkness is a really uncomfortable place to be. Total darkness prevents us from seeing where we are going, so that there is an increased likelihood of us missing something and putting ourselves at risk for some form of injury or other harm. In the dark, I am always concerned that I could walk face first into the end of some piece of pipe that I may not have seen or trip over some object on the ground. In the spiritual world, darkness has a similar effect, keeping us from achieving our desired goal of salvation. From this evening's Gospel reading in John, Jesus says, Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. If we honestly follow Jesus, we will be able to, s to clearly see the way that we can obtain the eternal life that God promises. By following Jesus' teachings and guidance, we no longer walk in utter darkness, but have the light of life to guide us. The light that Jesus provides contrasts markedly with the darkness of the world in which we live. There is really no need for me to comment any more on the darkness of the world. No one who is alive today cannot fail to see the signs, unless, of course, things are going to their liking. In many aspects, the world's decency continues to descend to new lows every day. What was once shocking, for example, semi-nudity in public, is now commonplace. To gain publicity and to make money, movies and the media continue to push the boundaries, openly making use of women's bodies and suggestive sexual overtones to the point where they have now gone way beyond what was considered decent. Today in the world, decency is far too common. When last have you passed someone and without knowing them or you, they knowing you, you both exchanged pleasantries? If ever a limit existed, it is now difficult to tell what it was. So what is this light that Jesus has brought into the world? Jesus' light is the understanding of what is good, what is right, what is godly, and what is true. His light brings hope for all who believe in him, and Jesus' light brings joy to each and every believer. Jesus, the light of the world, brings us all these things, knowledge of truth, hope and joy. Jesus invited all to come to him, saying, If any want this, let him come to me and drink, but not all will follow. We are all called, but few will choose to follow. To those who choose God, the light illuminates the ignorance of their minds, gives us the hope that it will be well with our souls in the end and brightens the darkness with joy. Believers are greatly blessed when they walk and bask in the light of the Christ. Many people live in darkness and do not know Jesus. Sadly, they do not know God. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life. Let us just stop for a moment and think about what Jesus is saying here. 
following Jesus seems similar to the imagery of the fledgling Jewish nation being led through the wilderness by God in a pillar of fire. The world has been presented with an opportunity to be led out of its wilderness. Following Jesus is more than just saying that we are his followers. Those who follow Jesus have the light of life to walk by. Notice that Jesus does not just say that a believer will not walk in darkness, but will walk in light. There is a big difference. Implied here, again, for emphasis, is the fact that we will have the light of life in us to guide us. My brothers and sisters in Christ, if you didn't know it, I am telling you now. You and I possess that light. We will be in an intimate, all-embracing relationship with God and Jesus for all times. Following Jesus means fastening ourselves to him. Following Jesus means going where he has gone, believing what he teaches and doing what he says that we should do. Put another way, without Jesus' light, we will look at life from the wrong perspective. We would seek to establish our dominance and authority over others and all our actions would be self-serving rather than being selfless and seeking to serve and help others, especially those less fortunate than ourselves. Jesus is the only true light. If Jesus is not our light, is not the light of our lives, then how can we see the nature of things in this world properly? We will not honestly see ourselves for who we are in the truth that is revealed by God's light. We will not focus our gaze on God. Worst of all, we may even think that we are fine just the way we are, and it is other people who have the problem. Please, please, my brothers and sisters, I implore you not to become self-deluded and forget that we are all sinners, each and every one of us, and that the journey that we are on continues daily. We all need a daily dose of Jesus to cure us from what is us and the world. There is only one thing you need when you are in the dark, a light to help you see your destination and guide your steps. Jesus is that light for the life in the world. When you are in the dark, you must follow the light to have any chance of arriving at your destination. Whenever there is a power outage or disruption in our country and the sun goes down, what do we all normally do? We hurriedly look for our flashlights, lanterns or candles and then follow the light to where we want to go. We need to see Jesus as that light for our lives because without him, we are walking in true darkness. Now the Pharisees were amazed by what Jesus said, but did not accept him as the light of their lives. We know that the typical response of man to Jesus and God's word is foolishness, one of unbelief. Rather than listening to Jesus, many reject him and the light that he brings into the world. Jesus is the light of all people. Without light, there is no growth. Light overcomes darkness. Light silences fear. The true light enlightens every aspect of human life. The word light, strange enough, captures a good description of Jesus' mission to the world while he walked among us. 
recall the power of the light of Christ to shine into the darkness of previous generations of Christians and of humanity. Jesus' light affected the darkness of racism, self-indulgence, the darkness of prejudice and discrimination, the darkness of violence in all its forms. Many in previous generations resisted hearing Jesus' teaching. Such realities are haunting reminders that men and women in every age fail to hear Jesus' proclamation of the good news. Jesus, God incarnate, has the power to redeem everyone. Jesus provides the light to prevent us from taking a wrong turn in the road, a wrong unlit turn that may cause us to become lost and forfeit eternal life. Taking a wrong road or a wrong turn can even cause our death. Ultimately, Jesus' light brings life. Living Christ, Christ's living light leads us to hear and to see life and faith in new ways that create hope. Following the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, his message went out throughout the entire world and was not just restricted to the Jews, but to all nations. Jesus was a light to all the nations of the world and continues to be such a light. The darkness of foreign gods and idols were discarded and the light of Christ has shone through. His gospel transformed the nations. It transforms the world and it is transforming us. In Christ, we no longer stumble and bumble around in darkness, but we have the light to see. The words of God are now a light to our path, and we do not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. The eternal life graciously promised to us by our loving God and Savior. Jesus is a light that never goes out. In all of your times of trouble, seek the Lord, look to the promises of the word, shun the darkness, seek Jesus, the light of the world, for it is he who truthfully said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I have said these words to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now recite the Apostles' Creed, found on page 69 of our Books of Common Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us now turn to page 44 and recite Suffrage C, found on page 44. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. 
day by day we bless you we praise you we praise your name forever lord keep us from all sin today have mercy on us lord have mercy lord show us your love and mercy for we put our trust in you in you lord is our hope and we shall never hope in vain we now turn to page 161 and recite the collect for the sixth Sunday after the Epiphany. O God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, give us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We now return to page 71 and recite the third and fourth prayers on that page. O Lord, support us all the day long of this troublous life until the shades lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed. The fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in mercy, grant us safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, Lord, that we may be faithful to you without turning aside, worship you without growing weary, serve you without failing, diligently seek you, happily find you, and forever possess you, the one and only God, blessed forever and ever. Amen. A collect for Sundays found on page 72. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence where we may be still and know that you are God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now turn to page 78 and recite a prayer for peace, for peace among nations, and a prayer for clergy and people. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love. So mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, guide the nations of the world into the way of justice and truth and establish among them that peace which is the fruit of righteousness, that they may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom comes every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and other clergy and upon the congregations committed to their charge the helpful spirit of your grace that they may truly please you. Pour upon them the continual dew of your blessings. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. We now return to page 73, Prayer of Dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or conceive, by the power which is at work among us, to him be the glory in the Church and in Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, may the week before you unfold with light and blessings from Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Do have a blessed week ahead.